plaintiff, Sierra Miller, says the defendant is her mother, but she was raised by her aunt due to the defendant's crack addiction. Sierra admits that while she was incarcerated, her mother stepped up to help take care of her children, but she's suing her today for the balance due on a loan and the cost of a truck. Defendant Cynthia Miller admits she was a crack addict for 20 years and says she even prostituted herself to support her addiction. However, Cynthia says she is now 11 years clean and sober, but she denies owing Sierra for anything. Start with you. Hi, Judge Mathis. Uh, me and my mother, we haven't had the best relationship. When I was younger, she was addicted to drugs and my aunt raised me. What type? Um, crack cocaine. Just the 80s? Um, no. It's when did it start? It was like in the 90s. Really? People were on their way off crack by the 90s. <laughs> All right. And when did she stop? Um, so. Go ahead. She stopped it. about, let's see, when I went to prison. I went, when I was 24 years old, I did four years in the penitentiary. Um, Dope? No, I was, I did for uh, stabbing someone in self-defense. During that time, she you know, promised to take care and do right by my children. And I let her keep them while I was doing the four years. Did the person die? I'm trying to get back to your sentence. No. You got four years and they ignored your defense, obviously. Yes. Rejected your defense. Right. What was the damage to the victim? Um, I don't know. They just had a few stabs. Huh? A few, a few stabs. stabs. No permanent few... injury? I don't really know. I haven't. You know, oh, seen a person okay, well, that's what day. I gave you for, yeah. Yeah. You're just going to stab somebody and don't even see what happened. All right, he'll be dead. And you ain't even checking No, I don't think it. they did. I don't think they did. <laughs> Go ahead, ma'am. Okay. Continue. You okay. <laughs> okay. went to prison. I did. Tell me what else. I went to 20, I went to prison, did four years. During that time, my mom had my children, and she took care of them, good care of them. See, I was trying to see whether you were over-sentenced, but you, you don't even know what happened. So we don't know whether you got excessive sentencing or not, because that's the case in the justice system. Uh, some folks get excessive sentencing, and that's why I was asking those questions, but I can't determine that because you don't even know what happened. So what you got out in what year? 2012. All right. How'd that go when you came out? It, it went well. It went very well. Um, I hold a job, can held a job. My mother was clean and sober for 11 years now. Um, and she took care, good care of my children. What was the damage to the victim? Um, I don't know. They just had a few stabs. No permanent injury? I don't really know. I haven't even oh, seen a okay. person well, to Oh, okay. That's what day. I gave you for, yeah. Yeah. You're just going to stab somebody and don't even see what happened. All right. He'll be dead. And you're in check No, I don't think it. they did. I don't think they did. <laughs> Go ahead, ma'am. Okay. Continue. You okay. <laughs> okay. went to prison. Plaintiff Sierra Miller is suing her mother who admits she was a crack addict and even prostituted herself to support her addiction. Let me get some background from you, ma'am. Oh, how you doing, Judge Mathis? Uh, I've been through some changes. Um, at some times, I was uh, addicted to crack. I was on crack for 20 years. Then What between... years were those from? Huh? What years? Oh, Mr. Where those from? Oh, gosh. I'm going to say, huh. Oh, wow. In the 90s, uh, 86, 87. You don't know, 86, you, 87, you don't know 80. the years or maybe the range, mid 80s, early 80s. You I was, don't know anything. I was in my 20s. I was in my 20s. Okay, what I'm going to say around 80, 86, 87. Okay, around 86. Okay, okay. All right, at the okay. height of the crack epidemic, you yes. became My addicted. daughter was about two or five at that time. All right. But anyway, so I, I got sober. All right. I was on <laughs> Good. 2000. Good. Oh, but yes. So uh, how did you get on crack, and what was your life then? Oh, it was How were you introduced? What happened? Uh, the guy you were going with, and he said, No, no, it, it was no doubt. It was a family member. It was a family member. She was doing it, and she didn't, she just offered me some. She didn't say, Here, you know, just, you know. Have so, you ever even had coke? I, I, no, no. Wow. I don't, I don't, I didn't sniff. I just did the crack and the pipe. Okay, and I was on that for like, 
I said like 20 years. What was your okay. life like? Oh, it was terrible. It was terrible. I couldn't keep a job. Uh, I was just, I didn't go to jail and I didn't rob nobody at the time. It was just begging for money, you know, and I did, I'm, I did a little prostitution, you know, but at this day right now, I'm 11 years sober. What are you doing with your life? I'm a crossing guard for the city of Akron. What have you been doing over the course of the 11 years? I've been working for uh, Miller South. What's that? I was, I was an activity supervisor. Okay. What is Miller South? It's a, a vocation school, an yeah. art school for okay. good kids. You and know? what else? Yeah. I, uh, well, that's enough. Okay. Uh, yeah, but let me, because you're helping people. Yeah, that's right. what I was and, trying to get around yeah, okay. to because so many addicts, one, they don't want to tell their success story. Oh, I gotta pull it out of you. Yeah. You should have been wanting to come in here and say, Judge, I think my story is inspirational, so I wanna tell you everything about it. That's right. And then tell you the recovery and how I became successful after overcoming one of the most tremendous obstacles anyone has faced. That's what I was trying to get out of you. And now I'm, I'm helping, whether you volunteer or not, you're working, I'm helping youth get their lives together, preparing them for the world so they can get jobs. Because I know now that you have to have a skill. That's what I'm that's looking it, to hear. It, and so I want folks to know if you come in here, don't just come in here telling me about your problems unless you haven't overcome them. If you've overcome them, then I want the audience to hear because a lot of them are addicted to drugs or their children are addicted to drugs or their grandchildren. And so they're looking for ways to cope. They're looking for ways to encourage them. They want to be able to say, I watched uh, Judge Mathis episode and there's a woman on there that says she was addicted to crack for 20 years, but she hadn't been addicted for 11 years and she is now doing good by the community because that's what's expected uh, of a drug addict, recovering drug addict. In fact, NA says that, that you should go and try to re repair the damage you have done to your community, your household, your society, whomever you can track down that you hurt or damaged. You're supposed to repair it. If you can't track them down, then do something volunteer and or in your area, whether it's in your area or not. Or I tell folks, go into drug therapy because you are more prepared to provide therapy and advice and they do utilize folks in those uh, rehabilitation institutions. So I just want everybody to know. And tell me, how did you get a job? Um, ah. Did you go to rehab and no, stay for No, I didn't have, uh-uh, I prayed to God. I prayed to God. I go to church. I go to... 11 years ago, Lord. you were already there. Yes, yes. I, so I, you I, were smoking crack while you were in church? No. Nah, That's what I'm asking you. How oh, did God. you get off before going to church? I right. was, you don't want to help nobody. Plaintiff Sierra Miller is suing her mother, who admits she was a crack addict and even prostituted herself to support her addiction. Tell me about the loan and the truck. Okay. So even though she lost... Um, she was sober for 11 years. She gained, she lost one addiction, but she gained another one in gambling. So last year I had income tax time came around and she knew I was getting some money. And she asked to go to Michigan, a family gathering. Um, she needed $2,000 for a personal loan. Some family members was going for the weekend. And I asked my daughter, could I? Let her finish. Okay. Thank mm -hmm. you. So uh, she asked for the personal loan and we got a promissory note you can refer to on page two. Um, we signed in. She agreed to pay $100 a month until paid in full. So she paid um, April, May, June, and July. August, her car broke down. And I had a vehicle that was just sitting in the driveway. Um, I was going to get rid of it, sell it, or whatever, whatnot. She came to me, and she needed the vehicle. It's my mom, of course. We came up with another agreement. Okay, $1,500, and you make the payments on top of the loan until paid in full. Here's another secondary um, promise note that we find, my evidence on page three. So then she decided that she doesn't owe any money 
after we had the agreement, signed over the title, all of that. Did she tell you why? She feels that she does grandma duties. Okay. Take the kids for school. How was she as a mother? She wasn't a good one. She wasn't there. I was raised by my aunt. Oh, her okay. sister. So she abandoned you to crack. And now she want to tell you, I'm going to charge you for even keeping the grandkid. Now yes. I'm not going to take care of you all your life. When you get kids, I'm going to charge you yes. if you want me to keep them. Yep. Wow. Yeah. All right. She wanted me, me to hear do from too you, much. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. She wanted me, me to do too much. Uh -huh. She wanted me to do too much, Your Honor. I know. Your Honor, so... I'll they go. wanted you to do too much when she was a child. <laughs> that's why you abandoned I'll her. Go, <laughs> Just I'll laugh go. at it. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> we, we didn't you wanted her to do too much. You heard her. That's why she left. It wasn't because of crack. You wanted her to do too much as Take a baby. The kids to school, she ain't had time for all of that. Bingo. She got oh, time yeah. bingo. Take the kids to school, pick them up, take them to work, mm -hmm. back, work, back, school. How old are they? No, How I'm, old are they? I have an 18 year old, a 16 year old, and a four year old. Okay. And what problem? Oh, you say you don't have enough time. Have you told her that you're overwhelmed? Yes. I, I, Ma'am? No, no, I say, have you? No. Why? If that is why you want to charge her, well, okay. why didn't you tell her that you've put this is too much for me? I have. Okay, I'll take that back. You say I you have. I have told her that, Your Honor, I have. Okay, but she still thinks that. Ma'am, tell me why you haven't do your order and why you haven't paid her. I'm not gonna listen okay, to any okay. more dope fiend because stories. Okay, I, I figured that I was. <laughs> I figured that I'm not gonna pay because I do why? too much for my grandkids. Okay, you, uh -huh. okay, and I just said case closed. Okay, what did you do with the money? I did a little bingo. I did a little slot. Okay. I did fix up the car because I did. You stole the money. You're dishonest and you still have crackish ways. Maybe that's because you never went to N.A. and the other places that tell you the number one thing is honesty. And if you're not honest, then you're still a dope fiend. Have a good day. Judgment for the plaintiff. Thank you. Get your life together, ma'am. You still, you're still lying to your children. I'm not lying. You just lied to your children. You took the money, ma'am. You stole the money. Hopefully, we can get past this and build a better relationship. And we will. As mother and, and we daughter. will. I apologize for going through, coming here and going through all this, you know. Um, I just really felt that I didn't really have to do anything, you know. But I'm sorry, and I'll get back into it.